Greetings, and welcome to the Talk With History podcast. I am your host, Scott, here with my wife and historian, Jen. Hello. On this podcast, we talk about history's continuing impact on us and our personal journey through YouTube as we continue to explore, record, and share our history walks with you. Now, before we get into our main topic, I want to lead off with a brand new five-star review of the week. This is from Mermaid237. We're actually going to give her a shout out twice on this podcast and next week's podcast because she left us 10 stars in her subject title. So both Elvis videos, uh, podcasts. Both yeah. Elvis videos are, are getting a shout out to Mermaid237. Um, so a longtime listener, first time reviewer. Yeah, she said, well done, you two. Not only do I love the variety of topics, but I love the knowledgeable, respectful way you two delve into history in some controversial topics. I just listened to Henrietta Lack's episode and thought you did a beautiful job educating us on her immortal legacy. Her story is mandatory read for most and Mermaid 237, she's a, a nurse yeah. just studying all that. So she's very familiar with the Gila cell and Henrietta Lacks, look it up. We love getting these reviews so and they do help the show grow. Um, so please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. If you leave us a five-star re- review, um, we'll give you a shout out. We'll answer a question if you have a question. Um, if you don't have an Apple device, you can reach out to us at talkwithhistory.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcast, The History Buzz, where we interview folks while chatting about history over a couple of drinks and let the conversation wander where it may. Now, I'm not going to preamble too much here um, <laughs> because the title of this podcast is going to give it away. We're giving a historian's review of the brand new movie Elvis. And just real quick, there's going to be spoilers in here. I don't think there can be too many spoilers for a movie on Elvis, someone who is so famous and everybody already kind of knows what happened in his life. But if you haven't seen the movie yet and you want to wait, we're letting you know now. So Jen, why don't you kind of tell us where we're starting off when we're talking about the movie Elvis? Yes. Like like you said, if you know anything about Elvis's life and just have tracked his his videos and the, the... media that's out there about him it's not too much spoilers but just how those things were approached in the movie sure and how things were kind of maybe molded together in the movie so that's and i'm not an elvis historian i'm gonna uh, emphasize that we lived in memphis for three years i know a lot of these places that they show in the movie intimately in real life and i do know a lot of his background and what he did but Again, as a historian, and I want my viewers or listeners to always be leery of this. If a historian is telling you how somebody felt who no longer is alive, make sure that they're using a primary source to tell you how someone felt. Elvis wrote that he felt this way, or Elvis said in an interview that he felt this way, not how they think he felt. Now, you can say you can imagine having all this pressure on you at this moment in time, but unless Elvis is telling you how he felt, and this is true for any historic figure who's no longer alive, a historian is just guessing. So, so the movie, right, to your mm-hmm. point, there is obvious, there's always interpretation yes. up to the actor, up to the director. Yes. But why don't you tell us about the movie? Because I actually haven't seen it yet. Yes. Jen, Jen went to go see it, like at an <laughs> evening show when it first got released. I and so I'm yeah. curious to hear your take on. So on I think th- the director was perfect for this movie. And yeah. I told you this because Baz, how do you say? Baz Lerman, Lerman, he did Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio. So Romeo and Juliet based in Miami, right? Instead of modern day, modern, modern day. Yeah. yeah. Instead Romeo of Italy, Juliet. he did Moulin Rouge. He did a movie that I love that's pretty old called Strictly Ballroom. So it's very flashy. It's yeah. very people who wear these very flashy costumes. It's, and just, it's, very, it's big. It's big. It's theatrical. It's, it's filled with symbolism. It's making these images larger than life and kind of flashing them quickly. So yeah. even in the opening sequence with the Warner Brothers symbol, yeah. it's like bedazzled like Elvis's capes or Elvis's belts like yeah, in yeah. the 70s, like to death. Right. And I'm like, oh, goodness. This is the perfect movie for him to do. I also felt like it was almost like his love letter to Elvis. Sure. I felt like it was how he was influenced by Elvis and how much he loved Elvis. That's what I felt coming through. Yeah. And I can see it in the attention to detail that he's putting into the costumes that he's putting into the sets. I could see he must really 
care for Elvis and how Elvis is portrayed. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's so many people that have been affected, yes. right? And that were fans of or culturally affected by Elvis mm-hmm. and what he did. And I mean, talk about someone, like you said, you know, Baz Luhrmann, who's done movies like this. He was probably already drawn to, yes. to that kind of uh genre to that kind of person, that personality. So like you said, this sounds like a perfect movie for him. It, it was. And honestly, you know, there people always say, is this a good depiction of Elvis? Was this a good depiction of Elvis? Up until now, there really hasn't been like a really great, you know, this is how Elvis must have been like or looked like. Yeah. They say this is Elvis. This came that came out in 1979 because it was so fast after his death. Yeah. Um, I think Kurt Russell plays Elvis. They say that's the best rendition. But you have to remember, Elvis didn't write a biography. Right. Right? So every every interpretation of movies we have from Elvis right now are from someone's point of view. Elvis and me is from Priscilla's point of view. Right? And so you have different people who are writing their points of view with Elvis. This is really from Colonel Parker's point of view. Right. And he did write a book. And Colonel Parker, Colonel Tom Parker was Elvis's manager for his entire, well, I would say he had one or two managers right before he became famous in 1954. But once Colonel Parker met him and they made the agreement, he was his partner for the rest of his life. Yeah. And, you know, this, you know, today's podcast of Talk With History is a little bit unique because this is the first time we're, we're not doing a video. Yes. We're not talking about a video. So it's a movie. You're, you're, you're <laughs> you can gonna, watch the movie first. You're going to give me, as yeah. someone who hasn't seen the movie, and our listeners kind of your historian's take and some of what you know, you know, factually sure. of Elvis and kind of how that was portrayed in the movie. Wrong, right, what they kind of what they did. So, sure. so where does the movie start off? So the movie starts off early life, Elvis. I mean, it starts off with Tom Parker. It starts off with Tom Parker, which is true. The end of his life, he basically wandered the Vegas Strip and in and out it's, of- It's played by Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks. Okay. And he wanders the Vegas, because he outlives Elvis. He wanders the Vegas Strip in and out of casinos because he has a huge gambling problem. Yeah. I saw something that you were watching on TV mm-hmm. the other night, and he can't, like at one point, they these guys said that like the colonel gambled away, lost like- over a million dollars in one night. In one like, night. Um, and that's in the 70s and 80s? Yeah. That's insane. So, and so basically the end of his life, he's basically cut off from Elvis's funds. Yeah. And he's just wandering in and out of casinos where he eventually will have a heart attack and die. And so that's kind of what you see. And you see Tom Hanks playing the colonel going back in his recollection okay. of his life with Elvis. So then it starts off with like, how did I meet him? What was it? And so it goes back to Elvis's just a original story in yeah. Tupelo. And it's almost comic book esque in some parts. It really plays on this idea that Elvis was very influenced by comics oh. and Captain Marvel. Interesting. And he wears the um, lightning bolt, like Captain Marvel. Oh, and the yeah. lightning bolt is a big part of his symbol. Is, yeah, taking care of business. Yeah, it's a big yeah. part of his CCB. brand. Yep. And so they kind of equate that to... Oh, Captain Marvel. But actually, is that, like, is that true, or is that just kind of the movie taken Hollywood? I think it's a, so. It's a little bit of both. It's, okay. it's not quite Captain Marvel. It's the Captain Marvel Junior. Oh, it's the other one, the the, the yeah. one in blue, right? Yeah. In the movie, you saw Shazam. Yeah. And did Elvis like comic books? Yes. Was he? Did he like to think of himself as the hero in comics? Yes. And the same thing with movies. Kind of why he wanted his movie career. Did he wear a lightning bolt as a kid? I mean, I, I can't tell you exactly. No one can. But what I, when I read in other historians, probably not. Okay. You know, so that's taking some... That's some artistic liberty. Artistic license. Yeah. Trying yeah. to pull in Elvis's influences. Sure. Right? And it shows him growing up. It, it goes back into the, him being born in Tupelo. It goes back into his mom having to move to a, a racial... So to a black side of town. So... The lenses that this movie is really looking at Elvis is through Colonel Parker's lens and race. It's really looking through a race lens, which is great because that really hasn't been done before. Yeah. Most people know Elvis is influenced by African-American music. He's influenced by African-American culture, clothes, style. But so when you say race, it's it's more the impact yes. that that race and especially him growing up in Mississippi and yes. in Memphis, Tennessee. The South. Ha- the, the so so really the not like in a negative sense where some people can take that negatively. 
you know, but really the, the, the impact that that had on him and how that shaped him. Yes. Yeah, like, so he, he embraces it, right? Yeah. Cause he lives among it. He's poverty, rural yeah. Mississippi. He's living with African-Americans who are predominantly in that poverty line as well. Yeah. And so he's very much influenced. And so in the beginning, he's looking into like juke joints and watching black singers sing we don't know if that's true. It's definitely not true that that singer is singing "That's All Right, Mama" because there's no, uh, there's no accuracy that they have, that singer ever sang "That's All Right, Mama." But it's kind of trying to connect the dots quickly for the viewer. Yeah, where his influence of music is coming from, which it did come from. And, and didn't you say it also? Do they show like church scenes because that gospel yes. was was big for him? Yeah. So he does Assembly of God revival. Oh, right. It shows him feeling the Holy Spirit through yeah. him. And so he's shaken, right? And he's being taken over by the the the, the feeling of the Lord, yeah. which is 100% true. Huh. He was brought up in a Pentecostal religion. He Just, was brought up. I mean, it, it, Scott yeah, can yeah, tell you. That's, uh, that's that's my world right there. I grew up in that. <laughs> so people will, right, Scott? They'll, be, they'll oh, speak yeah. in tongues. They'll yeah. be taken over by the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. They will, their bodies will gyrate, sure. right? They yeah. will feel the the lord through them he very much is influenced by that sees that interesting feels that yeah and that is a hundred percent true yeah so so I, I i knew that elvis had been influenced by gospel i didn't realize how how part of that was how part of the church that, that was for him how funda- foundational that was which honestly it kind of makes sense based on some of the choices that he makes later in life mm-hmm. like uh you know, when he gets married yes. and waiting and yeah. that's, there's some sketchy stuff there. But, um, you know, just as far as like uh, we talk in next week's podcast where we talk about, you know, his homes and grace mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But it, it, we talk a little bit about how he felt bad for his neighbors when he started getting famous and people traipsing across his neighbor's lawns. And so he's very community oriented. Yes. And. You know, he wasn't a big fan, you know, of his father. When his father got remarried, yes. he felt it was disrespectful to his mother. So I can, right or wrong, based on today's yes. standards, um, it's interesting. I didn't realize that that was as much a part of him as it was. Sure. So that's the big, I think, what I loved about this movie is it's showing you this internal struggle of Elvis Presley. Yeah. Though he is very much influenced by this humble, Southern, yeah. religious community He's, you know, anti-segregation upbringing, but he's thrown into Hollywood. Yeah. Right. And so just like you said with Priscilla, he doesn't have sex with Priscilla until he marries her. Yet he's sleeping with all these Hollywood women. Yeah. Right. So I think it was like this internal conflict for him. He wants to be a certain way. He wants to live a certain way. He's very tempted the other way. And so he tries to keep those two worlds separate. How interesting. It's a very interesting, it's a, it's a paradox. And right, Elvis doesn't drink, yep. yet he dies from drugs. Yep. We think of him as someone who's addicted to drugs. All the drugs are prescribed by doctors. Well, and also, I think we've talked about this before. Back then, some of the drugs that were prescribed weren't really seen as no. illegal. They didn't know, right? You know, okay. Yeah. You know, they weren't aware of health, you know, drinking was fine, you know. You know, drinking alcohol was, yeah. smoking was, you know, I don't think it was even seen as no, unhealthy yet. Not until, this, no, not, not know, when he died not, in the 70s. Yeah. So, so there was a lot of that stuff. You have to always remember the context. Yes. So now what's the next phase? So they, they start in Tupelo. Where's the movie move on to? Next? So it moves on to him going to Mississippi. I mean, to, to Memphis. Okay. And it shows like them again, kind of struggling as a family, getting into the projects at Lauderdale Courts, which is accurate. It it doesn't give any influence of the other places they live. He just kind of goes to Lauderdale Court. And then it shows him driving the truck for the electric company, which he does. Oh, okay. And it does show Sun Studio All and right. him going in there to sing. He sings Your Happiness for His Mother. That's He's right. singing the album. Um, The timeline is condensed yeah but of course it's a movie yeah. right they, they have that movies always do that yeah so he comes in to sing for his mother in august of 1953 he doesn't record that's all right mama until july of 54 so mm-hmm. it's almost a year later yeah. that he gets sam phillips in the studio and they've tried a couple times and he likes his voice 
but he's not connecting. And it's that night that the magic happens, right? And then is, do they focus on that? In the movie? I imagine yes. they probably focus on but that. But it's real quick. It's like he sings, that's all right, mama. It, it's taken to Dewey Phillips, which in the in real life, Dewey Phillips doesn't get it till three days later, but it's taken to Dewey Phillips like immediately. He plays it eight times. Oh, interesting. He brings him into the studio and... It, that did happen in real life. So yes. Dewey Phillips, we, we but know. Again, the, but again, again, the movie compresses all that. Compresses all that. And they, again, focus on race because it's like, oh, we hear this boy on the radio, but he sounds like he's black. And it's like, no, he's white. He's white. Oh, my God. And didn't, uh, again, I saw something you were watching. Tom Hanks was talking about the person on the radio or, or later starts talk, mentioning his high school. Yeah, so Dewey Phillips when he plays that song eight times that night, he keeps getting phone calls. Like, who is this kid? Who is this kid? So he actually finds Elvis at the movie theater and brings him into the record, to, to the radio station that yeah. night. Yeah. And he keeps asking him, tell me about high school because he's in high school. And, and he mentions like his- Humes High. Humes High, which in the area was the white high school. The white high school. Because it's segregation. It's, it's still, 1954. Yeah, it's still segregated. So schools, this Brown versus the Board of Education will be decided in 54. Right. But it's not implemented yeah. yet. And so he's in the white high school. And so they emphasize that because his music sounds African-American. Yeah. Some things they get wrong a little. They say it's the first rock and roll album recorded Sun Studio. We know that's not true. Yeah. We know the first rock and roll album, I think, is it's it's how it's I forget his name, but it was I'm recorded sure. probably two years later by an African American. Yeah. And they equate that to the cone breaking out in the yeah. amplifier yeah, yeah, yeah. and yep. they shove the they newspaper shove the, in the new, yeah, for to that, hold the cone in sound. and it makes that gritty sound. And that's the first recorded rock and roll yeah. um, song. And so Again, they're trying to show you this major influence impact of yeah. Elvis. So some parts at R2, he does go to the Hillbilly Hoedown. Uh, again, he records That's All Right Mama in July of 54. He's playing in the Hillbilly Hoedown in 54. He meets Colonel Parker then. Colonel Parker is not at that um, performance. Was So showed. was the Colonel, was he like already a manager? He was managing smaller shows and they okay. show that he his he was managing snow okay. that's who he's showing in there and he was managing like smaller shows and so he he knew how to market and he knew when something was different yeah and the impact it was having that is accurate okay so when you see tom hanks's character and you see him like I you know it, it dawned on him. I have to capitalize on this now. This kid is doing something different yep. and it's having a huge impact on people, right or wrong. Sure. It's having an it, impact. Because Elvis was controversial. Yeah. His music was Sue. And, I, and do, the they, South. do they emphasize that in they the They emphasize that. Okay. And so they really emphasize that, uh, you know, that not only with the the race side of it, but with him, just the, the sexualized. The, the physical side of it. gyration yes. and all that. I, I mean, I know that yes. just as a casual fan. Yes. And Elvis, of course, said, like, I, I just can't stand still when I hear the music. I feel the music, yeah. right? And so that that's what was hard about it. It's like, what it is what? So again, we, this is something we talk about in history all the time intent. Yeah. What's the intent right. of his movements, right? Because those same movements are. Could be in church. Sure. What's that? Yeah. Th those exact same movements. Yeah. And so that could be the Lord through me. But if you do them on a stage playing rock and roll music, in is front it of all a bunch of young women? Yeah, is it all just yeah. sexual? Right. right. So what's the intent? What's the context? Who are you around? And so that's what makes this such an interesting back and forth yeah. about this. So again, things are kind of condensed here. They show him playing at um Russwood Park. Today, Scott, it would be kind of over by the Nathan, but where the Nathan Bedford Forest statue oh, yeah. was, Bison Studio, where the hospital is. Okay, that was Westwood Park. It was kind of a, a baseball park, and okay. he plays an all-day concert there. Yeah. And the day he plays it, it's um, July of 1956. At the same time, at at the Overton Park Shell, which yep. we also know by yep. the zoo, a senator Eastward is giving a talk about segregation. Oh, and that does ha that is accurate. That does happen the same day. Huh. He's given his talk about segregation. Elvis is pouring a Rushwood Park. Now, in the movie, Elvis can hear him giving his speech. Which? I don't know. Now, they're relatively close. Yeah. But if you know Memphis, it's kind of hilly. Yeah, that it's it's not likely. It's not like it's flat land and the sound's going to reverb. Now, it could. If you had perfect, uh, you know. Yeah. 
if the atmosphere was perfect that night sure. and everyone was quiet, but he had like 7,000 people some, there. Some, some, Holly, some yeah, Hollywood he liberties could taken. hear him maybe. But that's supposed to be like this conflict, yeah, right? Elvis is here performing a show for, for African-Americans and white people. Yep. Even though there's a segregation line there, he's performing for both and he wants, he's influenced by both. Yeah. And here is somebody who is preaching segregation. Yeah. So it, again, to your point, in the movie, they're emphasizing that almost the dark and light side. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But there's things happening at that concert that weren't true. He sings the song Trouble. That doesn't come out for another f- two years. Oh. He, he records Trouble on, in King Creole oh. when he does King Creole. And that movie is not released until 1958. Yeah. And so this is 1956. So those are things that I'm like, okay, that's not quite accurate. But Trouble's a great song sure. to sing yeah. at that moment. Yep. Right? Yep. And... And especially for the movie. It's right? and when he, yeah, and he wiggles his little finger because they say, if you wiggle your little finger, you're going to get arrested. Well, he doesn't do that at the Rustwood Park show. He does oh. that in August, actually, in Florida. Oh, interesting. Uh, because he's told the same thing. So he does it there as yeah. kind of like a, egging them on. Yeah. Um, Elvis is never arrested for any of his gyration or any lewd acts. Elvis is arrested one time in Memphis for an altercation that happens at a gas station. Oh, okay. Some guy actually comes up to him and starts to rough him up and Elvis doesn't take it and, and swings at him. Yeah. And they, But then the, he's acquitted because sure. the, the judge finds that he was acting in self-defense. Yeah. That's the only time Elvis is ever arrested. Oh, okay. It's never so for lewd acts or anything like yeah. that. So they... They pushed that kind of like they want to show this controversy sure. that was happening, but it wasn't quite to the extreme. It was more spread out. So well, it wasn't. Quite and as- so and so as you know, again, to kind of put my YouTube spin on it. Right. What I'm learning as a storyteller, as a video creator, is you have to have conflict. Yes. So you have to. So even if they're kind of twisting some of that. Yes. Right. They're showing like, oh, these facts are compressing this and maybe he can hear this person over here and maybe he gets arrested because people are up, up in arms about it to emphasize that you create, you can kind of emphasize the conflict through an arrest that maybe yeah. didn't happen or taking some liberties with some of the potential facts. Yes. Um, and But there were some great parts. His relationship with B.B. King is absolutely accurate. Him oh, going cool. to Beale Street and being influenced by Beale Street yep. is absolutely, absolutely accurate. Yeah. If you ever been to Memphis, go to Beale Street. Yeah. It is the birthplace of the blues. They play blues all throughout those. It's amazing. Those, Juke those, joints. It's yeah. great. Him. So then they show him going into the army. Okay. And they say he uses the army to uphold his wholesome boy image. Yeah. There's controversy around that. Oh, is there? Right? So some people say... Colonel Parker did manage that, that he did. Kind of told him, hey, you need to do this. You need to do this to show that you are all American. But there's also people say he was drafted. There was no way to get out of it. Was there any way, has anybody ever tried to verify whether or not he was drafted? So he was drafted. That is true. But he didn't try to, he didn't try to get out of it. He didn't try to get out of it. And he could have went to the USO. They offered him the USO. Oh, really? And he, he actually did his duty. Now so, he so did. He could have done USO yeah. as his as his draft, as his draft time. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And he doesn't. He actually does the actual yeah. service. Now Gladys will die between when he enters and when he goes to Germany. He she dies right after boot camp. So he comes back to Graceland. Oh, I didn't know that. I felt Gladys and Vernon are depicted a certain way in the movie. They kind of turn up their faults oh. and heighten them. Yep. I felt Austin Butler, who plays Elvis, was magnificent. I feel like he should get the Oscar. I felt in that moment where he's sitting on the porch of Graceland talking to the press yeah. after Gladys dies, he looks like Elvis Presley. And what is so interesting about Austin Butler is his mother in real life actually died when he was 23. That's the same age that Elvis is when his mother dies. Oh, and so he, he, you think maybe he channels that a little I bit. I think he could. And I think what makes Elvis to me so amazing is the moments when he's the most authentic yeah. is the moments to me that he shines the best. Yeah. And so the moments where he, the, and we'll talk more about this, like this where he's actually on stage and nervous or he's actually just, you know, just being himself and like, this is what I'm going to do. It's yeah. when he has his best moments. And I feel like Austin Butler has learned, he mimics those movements so well. He mimics, yeah. he learned the voice Right, he he mimics that 
authentic. Yeah, I, I, I will say, even as like not a giant Elvis fan, I do want to watch the movie. Yeah. Um, and you know me, I, I kind of like some of those artistic, especially musical movies. Like right. I love Rocket Man, Elton yes. John. Yes, I love the the movie with Queen. Yes, right. Like those were like I love. I grew up on musicals. Yeah, Bohemian you know? Rhapsody. Um, and he wins the Oscar. Rami Malek yeah, wins the Oscar. Yeah. That's why so, I think Austin Butler. So I, I do want to watch this. Um, because I love the musical aspect of, mm-hmm. of movies like this because you get that fantastic music. Like yeah. in Rocket Man, I loved that movie. It was so great. It was different. Yeah. You know, same thing with Bohemian Rhapsody, right? So it's the same thing with Elvis, right? Yeah. They're they're capitalizing not just on, you know, who is someone who is a pretty incredible person, but the music that comes with that. Yes. And just the and, and kind of giving you that insight to the era. So in any movie like this where they're shining a super bright spotlight that is a movie, everybody's faults and their their good side and their bad side Mm -hmm. is going to be kind of turned up a little to 11. Yes. You know. Yeah. And that's so and Austin Butler will sing two songs in there. He's learned Elvis's voice and and you can kind of you can tell but they're very good. Now what I will emphasize again, spoiler alerts, this is a movie from Tom Parker's point of view and a race point of view about Elvis Presley. They're going to gloss over every other character. Yeah. There, do not think this is a movie about Priscilla. It is not. It is not a movie about Lisa Marie. It is not a movie about the Memphis Mafia or anybody else. It's it not a movie. It's just Elvis yeah. and Elvis. There's no Anne Margaret. There's nothing. There's no women after Priscilla. There, no name women who are in bed with him, but nothing like that. This yeah. is Elvis. So, so it's, it's really the colonel. Yes. Right. And it's kind of his using him as the as the lens a little bit yes and then purely focused on Elvis yes so be but they do a really good job of the race influence and showing where Elvis is getting a lot of this authentic sure sound from yeah but other than that it really is an Elvis movie which is probably what makes it so different yeah is it it's that point of view yeah and so I appreciate that it's 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 not it's his life, but it's not really his encompassing life. Yes. It's it's literally just like him, him, him. Yes. Yeah. So they kind of gloss over the movie career real fast. It kind of shows like he wants to do movies. He, It is the star he reaches for, but he wants to be like a James Dean. He wants to be like a Marlon Brando. Yeah. Now, the truth is Elvis Presley at one point is the he, colonel will say he's the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Well, at the time, he's paid a million dollars a picture. Marlon Brando is paid $1.25 million a picture. Elizabeth Taylor is paid also a million dollars a picture. But Elvis is doing two or three pictures a year. And Marlon Brando and Elizabeth Taylor are not. Oh, so wow. literally, he is the highest paid actor. Oh, that's interesting. So how you want to play with that nuance, sure. he, he is making more money than them. Yeah. So, But what he doesn't like is the scripts. Yeah. Right? Because he does do Flaming Star and in Flaming Star, he plays a, a half breed. I'm going to use that. You know, that's oh. what they term him. He's yeah. half white, half American Indian. And he play. it's amazing. And he's a great actor. And it bombs. Oh, really? Right? And so that's when they realize the movie studio needs to make money. Yeah. And to make money on Elvis Presley, it needs to be simple, and music. easy script, and music. Yeah. But some yeah. of his best songs come out in these movies, right? So I told you Trouble comes out in King Creole. I Can't Help Falling in Love With You comes out in Blue Hawaii. Oh, yeah. That's 1961. He ends all of his Vegas shows with I Can't Help Falling in Love With yeah. You. That's my parents' wedding song. Yeah. You know, like, so a lot of these, Jailhouse Rock, right? A lot of these. So, so, but songs. the movie doesn't really focus too much on his movie career. Yeah. So it just glosses over just like how he's feeling unfulfilled, how he's just kind of becoming a, a nobody. He, he wants to do yes. more. So this is when the comeback special comes up. And then it's very symbolic that he meets with the producers of the comeback special at the Hollywood sign because oh, at the time the Hollywood course. sign in the 60s is all run down run down and rusted and fallen apart and people have stolen so, pieces so of to it. your point it's very symbolic very symbolic which right. didn't happen but I will tell you what really did happen that's awesome is these producers of the 68 special who are producing at the time Jimmy Morrison and they're helping other people um, James Brown make a comeback yeah. they take Elvis Presley to Sunset Boulevard oh. and they walk down the street huh. and nobody recognizes him really that's how they prove to him that he needs to make a comeback So, and that, that actually happened that actually happened oh wow so the Hollywood sign is symbolic yeah. of this moment where Elvis is losing now 
to the older generation, they probably would. But this young 60s, sure. late 60s, early 70s, yeah. no one cares about Elvis Presley. Oh, how interesting. Right? They're very influenced by the Beatles and, yeah. you know, the Rolling Stones. Yeah, yeah. How interesting. Elvis' 50s. You I know? don't think I knew that. So that's what they do. And so... In the movie, they make it out like Colonel Parker wants him to sing, wants him to be a crooner yeah. and sing a Christmas special, kind of like what Perry Como used to do yep, and stuff, yep, yeah. and wear the sweater and sing. And he doesn't want to do that. And he doesn't want to do that. Well, see, in real life, yes, did Colonel Parker present it like that? He did. But in real life, I was pushed back and said, I want to do it this way. And Colonel Parker bought off on it. In the movie, they make it seem like he did the old switcheroo. Uh, like the stages were all made for the Christmas special and Elvis just performed what he wanted. No, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. (laughs) It wasn't the old switcheroo. Now, they want to make it seem like Elvis is pushing back against the colonel's ideas, which he does do, but he doesn't do it instantaneously. Well, and again, from a story perspective, right, you're having conflict, conflict, conflict. He's down, Mm -hmm. right? The hero is down at his lowest point, and then the hero pulls himself yes, out the hero yeah he- so yeah. in the movie yeah that actually fits well it does. right in in real life real life is not a, is not a story <laughs> like that right i know um but in the movie that works well so i can see why they would have done that yeah. to to show that um because again you're stretching some of the facts and some of the relationships there yeah um that's interesting so but i and i love the 68 combat special he wears the black leather yeah he has a yep. small stage Again, I think probably the, some of his most iconic. Yeah, you can you watch know. the 68 special now. Yeah. I think to me, authentic Elvis Presley. Yeah. He's laughing. Yeah. He's goofing around. He's interacting with the crowd. He's interacting with the crowd. Yeah. He's very, in, and I think that black leather is so influential now. You see so many comedians who will wear black leather sure. for their opening shows. I right? don't think that was. Because Eddie Murphy the, does it in Raw. Eddie Murphy does it in Raw. And I think leather was probably a little bit more in then. Sure. Right? I, like you start talk about some of the bands of the 70s and, and the late 60s. Sure. Um, but Elvis being Elvis, he made it iconic. He made it iconic. He still looks great. And to me, that special, people really just love to see people at their most authentic selves. They're not faking it. Well, and, and I'm sure they probably emphasize this in the movie. Everybody loves a comeback story. Yes. So what they, what they do in that comeback special... Robert F. Kennedy is assassinated in the uh, Ambassador Hotel in L.A., the beginning of 68, the beginning of July. So what they do, for the, they, they pretend, this is not accurate, that he's filming the comeback special as Robert F. Kennedy is killed. Oh. And then he's so influenced to break away from this singing Christmas carol thing that he writes, I have a dream. Oh, interesting. Right? Or he writes, the, I, If I Can Dream It, you know, that yeah, famous yeah. song yep. that he sings. And yep. we cut to it in um, one of our, our videos. Vi- yeah. our videos. Yep. Well, that's not exactly true. Was Did he film the comeback special in July? He did. It was not the beginning of July. It was the end of July. Was he influenced by Robert Kennedy's assassination? I would say probably. It wouldn't be like he wouldn't know about it. Sure. He's filming it in L.A. Robert F. Kennedy's that, killed that in L.A. that wasn't the source of... It didn't happen at the same yeah. time. He's not watching it on TV as he's filming. That's not happening. They had pre-production while the assassination happened. Yeah. But the filming is happening weeks after the assassination happens. And the, I have the, 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 the dream song that he sings, it's... They make it seem like they recorded it in one night, which is a great story, right? It's a great that, it, but it didn't. It wasn't. They did. They did write it for the special. It very rarely happens. It's that a way. great song, yeah. but it was not written in one night, which it, it makes it look so cool. And Elvis, to me, is one of his greatest songs. He yeah. does deliver it so yeah. well. And maybe he was feeling this angst of the country. Yeah. Again, it's the it's the hero coming back. Yeah. In the story is the hero coming back. So from there, yes. then we go on to Vegas. Yeah, so then we gloss over things pretty quickly, right? He makes the comeback and then he goes on to Vegas. Now what we get is Elvis wanting to tour. Okay. Right? He wants to like see his public and yeah. he wants to get out and tour. And he, um the colonel's like, well, let's do Vegas. You get this whole stage. You get to make your own show. And if you like this, then we'll tour after this. And that is probably true because what they what they talk about in the movie that doesn't really come out until the end of Elvis's life and really more so after Colonel Parker kind of gets sued by the Elvis Presley Foundation is, Elvis, is Colonel Parker 
is an illegal alien. Oh. Yeah. He, Where's he from? He's from Holland. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> but he comes to America. He stows away, comes to America. He never gets a green card. How Was he an actual colonel? He was not an actual colonel. He, so just, he, he yeah. just got the nickname? He got the nickname. Huh. Now, if you live in the South, that. sometimes colonel is a term of endearment. Colonel okay. Sanders. Sure. Right? It's yeah, not, yeah. You're not an actual colonel. I noticed that during my research in history to certain people who hold high office in esteem yeah, in Memphis yeah. in the past, they would call him Colonel. Interesting. And that's I, how he gets Colonel I Parker. No He's not really Colonel. He does so, serve in the army. So is that true? Because I think in the movie, they imply that um, he doesn't want Elvis touring because or going overseas because he can't go with him. Yes. That's that. So again, that's true. Yeah. He can't go with him. Now, what's not true is that the colonel wasn't at all of his shows. Oh. Right? Yeah. Now, the colonel does like to exert a lot of control, but he's not at all of his shows. So technically, could he have gotten him on a tour and let him go? Probably. Yeah. He wouldn't have had as much control on him. The one thing that the colonel does have over Elvis Presley that is really unheard of, he has a 50% contract with him. Wow. And that is, even to this day, is... This not, that's unheard of. Yeah, that doesn't happen. But he, his whole career, he has a fifty. He makes fifty percent of what Elvis makes. Yeah, and so that's probably why he was such a degenerate gambler. And he gambles it all away. That's insane. So, what I appreciated about the Vegas show is it's, so the parts that's not true is the it's the International Hotel. It is run by the mafia. That is completely true. The International Hotel offers, if Elvis performs, they'll pay for everything. That is not true. Elvis did pay for the band. He did pay, I think it was 80000 Oh, wow. Like, like a week for his band and everything. Or maybe it was a month, something like that. Oh. Um, what I did really love is it shows Elvis Presley make the show. It reminded me yeah. of that Michael Jackson movie we saw. Yes. Right? Where he makes his show and where he's sitting there with all the people. He's, and he's directing and he's starts saying, directing. Yeah. You start singing this. You start playing this. Let's bring up this instrument. More, more a hand in yes. the actual production yes. of the music and the show yes. than people realized. It shows you just how musical he is yeah. in his ear. Same That's thing with cool. Michael Jackson, right? He it just, just showed me for it. how much they put. It's almost like a composer. Sure. Right? How they can yeah. put together the music and... That was amazing. So it shows his Vegas show. It shows the Colonel Parker talk in the owner of the ambas in the uh, international hotel for a five year, $5 million contract. Yeah. That is true. What is not true though, is the um, international hotel will be sold to Hilton and become the Hilton hotel. Yeah. Well, Elvis is there in those oh, years. Okay. So they don't, they don't allude to that at all. Sure. But so that's not probably, that, not, probably not needed. Not that needed. Now, the, 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 do they kind of like sunset that? Do they just fade to black or do they actually like imply what how Elvis actually passed away? So what what it shows in this this seventies Vegas is he has this want to tour. Yeah. And for some reason he keeps not being able to the colonel keep and he's starting to see the hold the colonel has on his life. Yeah. His life is falling apart. He's getting, he got divorced from Priscilla. I mean, he's, he's probably like on all sorts of drugs. He's on all sorts of drugs. Like prescribed. And, he's yeah. unhealthy. And he starts to realize from people telling him that the colonel has all this influence on you. And he has like this meltdown on stage where he. So did that actually happen? So kind of. He has this, like, he fires the colonel on stage. You're fired. You're fired. And at the end, you know, he fires the colonel. Well, in reality, what happens on stage, he does have a meltdown. Yeah. But it's about a kitchen staff guy that got fired that he really liked. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, hey, that guy made yeah, my favorite. Yeah. yeah. And he, like, again, Elvis is such a people he's person. A, yeah, he is. That he gets upset about it and he has a little meltdown on stage. And then after that meltdown on stage, he fires the colonel. Okay. Privately. Okay. And in the movie, then the colonel gives him an $8 million bill of all the things that he's fronted. And he wants the the money for the bill. And yeah. Vernon doesn't know what to do. That's kind of true. Vernon was not very good at writing. Elvis, Elvis's father? I was his yeah. father. And so in the truth, they think that they don't have any copy of the bill. They think that Colonel Parker gave him like a $5 million bill. Yeah. And... Elvis was pissed because he's like, you've taken 50% of my yeah. money. I've paid this off. And, yeah. and he doesn't want it to go to court. He doesn't want it to become an issue. And the colonel is telling him, you know, no one else is going to take care of you like I do and run things like I do. And 
now you got to find this money and you're broke, which yeah. is true. So the truth thing about Elvis Presley is he was broke because he spent everything he had. Yeah. Right. And Elvis Presley was a giver. And I tell people this, this is one of the things I love about Elvis Presley. Probably the thing I love about Elvis Presley is he was a big philanthropist. Yeah. Right. Like we have the Pearl Harbor Memorial in Hawaii because of Elvis Presley. Yeah. They couldn't afford it. They asked yeah. him to fly out and do a concert. He did. And they raised the money for it. All the money from it went to the memorial. He didn't yeah. take a cent. Yeah. He would buy a Cadillac for someone. And while he was at there, he would see someone else. Hey, you want one too? I'll buy you one too. He bought his cook a Cadillac. Yeah. So when Priscilla, when Elvis dies and Lisa Marie the house goes to Priscilla after Vernon dies and she realizes there's nothing yeah. in the, in for Lisa Marie. So that's why they, they start up Graceland. She starts up Graceland 1982 okay. for her daughter. She does it for Lisa Marie. And honestly, by now there's a huge nest egg for Lisa Marie because she gets all of the royalties yeah. and everything. But at the time there was nothing. And it was Priscilla's idea to open the house up to the public and to get money for out for Lisa Marie to yeah. have, and so so does so so I'll, I'll ask you that what everybody's like thinking, you know, what the important question is here. It's like, does this movie get your stamp of approval from either enjoyment perspective or a historian perspective? Why don't you give us? Why don't you give us each? I loved it. You loved it. I loved it, and even at the end, when they show his demise, it's quick. Yeah. Right. So they don't linger on they it. They don't linger on it. They actually cut to Elvis Sings Unchained Melody at a concert in July of 77. Yeah, you said they cut to the real footage. Yeah. So, so that's Austin cool. Austin Butler does it. Yeah. He has prosthetics. He said they had planned for him to put on weight and to really be heavy for this. Yeah. But because they were filming during COVID and they had to jump back and forth oh, between sure. timeline. Yeah. They do use prosthetics. It's too difficult, yeah. And he sings it, and he's great, and then it cuts to Elvis. It's almost flawless, yeah. the cut. And what it shows to me is that voice never leaves Elvis. Yeah. Even at the end, two months before he dies, his voice is perfect. Yeah. And he's singing this song, and then it cuts to a bunch of clips from earlier of the real Elvis yeah. in those situations. That's cool. It was amazing. Yeah, and, it it's, was- and it sounds like historically relatively accurate, a decent amount of compression yes. and some Hollywood liberties to kind of amp up, you know, conflict and some, some, I will know. say the costumes impeccable, okay, impeccable attention to detail and authenticity sets impeccable. Beale street's a little off, but only we know because yeah, yeah. we live there and we, we were down at Beale street, but often. Graceland impeccable. So, yeah. and all these sets are in Australia. Yeah, that's right. You said they, they filmed everything in it's Australia. Amazing. Yeah. So it gets my stamp of approval. Go see it. Yeah. It's not going to be, it's an homage to Elvis. Sure. Right. They turn some events up to 11. They gloss over others, but it's, they, it's fun. It's they good. compress up some events into one big conflict. Like sure. you said, um, if you want historical accuracy, read, read some of the books that are out there, do some research, but just know that, the portrayal of yeah. Elvis is the best I have ever seen. All right, cool. Well, no, that's, uh, again, this was a first for us on Talk With History doing kind of a, a historian's uh, movie review. So we encourage you to go check out the movie. And, and I'll guess that if you're an Elvis fan, you may have already done that. So let us know what you think. You can leave us a review here uh, with five stars, or you can reach out to us on Instagram at Walk With History. We're actually pretty pretty active on, on uh, Instagram. Yeah, and if I got something wrong or yeah. you want to say something else, you'd like think about, please leave a comment. I'd yeah, like to abso- learn more absolutely. or know more. Yeah, a comment to, or message us on Instagram at Walk With History. Um, and make sure you subscribe for next week's episode where we talk about Elvis's homes and all that came before and after the now world-famous Graceland. So thank you again for listening to the Talk With History podcast. And please reach out to us at our website, talkwithhistory.com. But more importantly, if you know someone else that might enjoy this podcast, specifically Elvis fans, please share this with them, especially if you think that today's topic would interest a friend. Shoot them a text and tell them to look up the Talk With History podcast because we rely on you, our community, to grow. And we appreciate you all every day. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Thank you.